Bernadine Dorn, perhaps even more notorious than Bill Ayers, was a bomber herself, and once praised mass murderer Charles Manson as a true revolutionary. Together, Ayers and Dorn contributed to a so-called revolutionary manifesto dedicated to the assassin of Robert F. Kennedy. Students at her university, Northwestern, joke about not wanting to take her class, afraid that something or someone will be blown up. But it's not a laughing matter. Don't we care that young people today are exposed to the communist rantings of a Charles Manson follower who was a member of a communist gang that engaged in violence and murder? Since the election, of course, they have emerged in a more visible fashion reminiscing about their days as terrorists and expressing hope that America is at the dawn of a new progressive era. And there is evidence that we will discuss today that a new so-called progressive movement is taking shape on the college campuses under their direction. Means, uh, we're just trying to educate uh, the public about what they're up to. Uh, and the fact is, uh, uh, that what passes, quote, for education is much different than that. Uh, I have, uh, since we announced this press conference, I've heard from parents who have uh, children in, 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 at the University of Illinois at Chicago who have been forced to undergo these lectures by uh, Bill Ayers, quote, on education. And, and they're, they're horrified. Uh, they're, they're, I mean, what, this is education? Uh, it, it's just nothing but Marxist propaganda that they're doing in the colleges. And now, as Trevor points out, and we document in our report, they claim they now have 200 uh, chapters on college campuses around the country. As Yogi Berra used to say, deja vu all over again. What are they up to? We're trying to find out. I would add, one of the very disturbing things is the tendency of some of these campus groups or organizations to whitewash who these people are. There's one group called Campus Progress. It's an arm of the George Soros funded Center for American Progress, which recently published an interview with Mark Rudd, but very sympathetic to him, very sympathetic, uh, which doesn't, of course, didn't go into any detail at all about his real activities as a terrorist. The fact that he himself in his own book I talked about approving the bombing of Fort Dix. Well, why should a character like this not only be publishing or writing a book to be published by a big company like News Corp, but be given sympathetic interviews by an organization working on college campuses to, to influence young people? I mean, what's the purpose of these influence operations? What are they trying to do anyway? Let's take a look. That's all we're saying. Let's take a look. Thank you, Larry. We need your help. And I'm going to be blunt. We need the help of the media. We need the help of the press. Larry has mentioned how the major media have done these puff pieces about or by Bill Ayers. And Larry's been unable to get his counter editorials or columns or letters printed by such papers as the New York Times and the Washington Post. I know we have members of the media here, and I challenge Fox News to put this on the air and challenge their chairman, Rupert Murdoch, about publishing or preparing to publish this trash, this terrorist memoir by Mark Rudd, in which he celebrates and talks about his ascent to the planned bombing at Fort Dix and talks about, with pride, how he had been involved in casing a courthouse to plant a bomb there. We've got the evidence. It's in your packets. It's up at usasurvival.org. His fingerprints were found in a bomb factory. Why should Rupert Murdoch's News Corporation to HarperCollins or any other respectable publisher come out with this kind of trash? 